Hello, and welcome to the Stony Brook University Admissions presentation co-hosted with Hillel about Jewish life at Stony Brook. I'm Amanda Mills, Assistant Director of Admissions. Um, today, our guests will introduce themselves, share some important information with you, and we'll be sure to save time for your questions. So please use the Q&A to ask questions anytime. And please note that while we will not be discussing general admission requirements, if you have not already done so, or if you'd like clarification on our admission process, please attend one of our live presentations, which review the application process, deadlines, and policies, and provide details about student life, living on campus, and student support. This session is being recorded and will be available to watch on the admissions YouTube page. Now, please join me in welcoming our presenter, Hillel Executive Director, Jessica Lemons. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to take a moment and share my screen. Um, and I'm just going to look for a, hand, a thumbs up from the folks that I can see. Yep. Okay, great. So, um, as Amanda said, my name is Jessica. I'm the Executive Director at Hillel. Um, and I'm just going to give a really quick overview of what Hillel does on campus and kind of the accommodations and uh, details for Jewish student life. We're also joined by two students. And so later on in the um, in the evening, I'll give them a chance to also introduce themselves and some of the work that they do on campus. But they are some of our best and brightest student leaders. So I'm excited that they're joining us tonight. Awesome. So a little bit before we get into Hillel, I think it's important to contextualize what does Stony Brook University provide for Jewish students? So we are very lucky that we have a really amazing partnership with Campus Dining, SBU Eats, and they provide kosher dining on campus as well as a kosher meal plan. And it's very flexible depending on your level of observance. So if you're very observant and only eat kosher food, they have an option where you can be on a 100% kosher dining meal plan. If you eat hectured meat or like hectured dairy, but you're able to eat vegan, non-hectured food or are interested in that, they have a flexible meal plan that a little has a little bit more flexibility on that. Um, and it's all certified by the Bada of Queens, um, which is a great, great thing that we're able to get all the way from Queens. Um, we also, Hillel itself partners with a lot of Vada of the Queens and Vada of the Five Towns. Um, different catering sites. So we bring in offsite catering often um, to kind of spice up the different catering options and the different kosher options on campus. Um, additionally, uh, for students who are more observant and need Shomer Shabbat accommodations, the university, both through um, the student union. So if, when you're in the student union on Shabbat or on holidays, uh, there are different accommodations for spaces that have accessible bathrooms, um, and other accessible rooms. And then for students who are living on campus, uh, there are Shabbat keys and other things that you can request uh, to make sh living on campus on Shabbat and on holidays a little bit more accessible. Additionally, for students of all observance levels, obviously there are religious accommodations for students who wanna go home. So if you wanna go home for any of the Chagim or holidays um, or wanna go home for um, any of the upcoming things like Saturday uh, Saturday Shabbat services or things like that, and you want to be at home for those, all you have to do is at the beginning of the semester, just submit your requirement um, to your professors, and they are legally required to give you off um, and to make sure that you don't miss any classes. So Stony Brook is amazing about creating uh, those opportunities for students to ensure that they're not missing classes and vital information um, around religious holidays. We also, as Hillel, we've got a suite in the student union, um, which is a central location on campus. We're very lucky that we've got a lounge and then also a suite of offices for all of our staff. So you can come, you can hang out with us and have a good time. So what is Hillel? I'm assuming if everyone signed up, most people probably know what Hillel is, but we are on a ton of different campuses. We're on 850 campuses to be exact across 16 different countries and four continents. Um, so we're very lucky that we're right here at Stony Brook. We have about 1,700 Jewish students on campus is our estimate. That's about 1,200 undergrads and 500 graduate students. We estimate that that's about 6% of the total student population. Um, I like to think of us as a small but mighty community because uh, it definitely feels like we're everywhere when we're together on campus and we walk across campus and we run into each other. And so it definitely feels like a tight, tight knit community. 
our team. So everyone who's in red is a full-time staff member. So there's me as the executive director. We have an assistant director. We have two springboard fellows and an Israel fellow. Um, and then those in black, those are our part-time staff members. So we've got a social worker who is available for clinical purposes to meet for therapy or group therapy. Um, and then we also have a wellness fellow through the social work school. So she does a lot of our wellness programming, our biweekly art studio, for example. Um, and then we have an Orthodox couple that we work with um, that does things like Mishmar study. They do Saturday morning davening, um, dinners, chagim, et cetera. Uh, so really anything that you could be looking for, someone on staff is probably doing it. Also, we're a I like to think we're a fun group of people to hang out with. Um, so you can always come by, grab a cup of coffee with any of us. Um, we're always excited to hear about student experiences and figuring out how we can make Jewish life on campus the best it can possibly be for every individual student. So what does Hillel provide? So we provide Shabbat and holidays, Jewish learning, community building, and leadership opportunities. We've got, for Shabbat and holidays, we do Shabbats twice a month. Uh, so a lot of our students go home on the weekends, but oftentimes a lot of students who even go home or commute will stay on campus when we're hosting a Shabbat, uh, because they want the opportunity to see their friends and hang out and share a really, may I say so, delicious meal. Um, a lot of our meals, we get them catered in from the five towns or from Queens. And so when I say the food is good, I mean like the food is good. Um, so for for example, our first big Shabbat of the year, we got like this big blowout barbecue and it was some of the best brisket I had had in a very long time. So, and it was kosher, which was amazing. Um, every Saturday, as I mentioned, we have Orthodox services on campus. On Friday, starting this spring semester, we'll be having more pluralistic services on Friday nights as also as an available option. So for students who are not do not identify as Orthodox or who want more of an egalitarian service, we're gonna have those on Friday nights. And then on certain Saturday nights, we'll have Orthodox services as well that are non-egalitarian. And then every Saturday, we have non-egalitarian Orthodox services. We also have regular holiday celebrations and meals. So we do an annual Purim party every year with all of our student clubs. Um, we do uh, Passover meals throughout the week. Uh, we do a giant break fast uh, in the student union. So a lot of these really big blowout celebrations. Um, for Jewish learning, we have a few different options. So every year um, we have our Jewish learning fellowship, which is a 10 week fellowship. It's paid if you complete a certain number of the sessions. We also have Israel learning opportunities that are similar six weeks and you get paid if you complete all the sessions. Um, and then this year we piloted our very first Shabbat hosting lab, which basically teaches you how to host your own Shabbat experiences for yourself and your peers, um, also paid. Um, and then we also have other one-off learning experiences with either our Orthodox rabbi or with our um, with our Jewish education fellow. Community building, some of my favorite stuff. So we do weekly bagel brunches, which not to pick favorites is one of my favorite things that we do. Um, I think it's just so nice to have this really intentional break in the middle of the week before Shabbat on Friday and really just to take a big break on a Wednesday and have everyone kind of come in um, to Hillel for a bagel and to hang out and to just catch up in the middle of the week. Uh, one of the things that Stony Brook that I think is really unique to Stony Brook is that Stony Brook has this intentional time at, on Wednesdays, 1 to 2.30, that's called Campus Lifetime. And it really is an intentional time where the university has asked professors not to schedule classes, not to book um, big exams, things like that, so that students can really take advantage of campus lifetime and can really take advantage of student life on campus. We use that as an opportunity to have bagels together and to be together as a Jewish community. Um, and I always love to see what the playlist choices are for the week because um, we always let the students kind of set the vibe. Um, we also do tons of coffee conversations. Our staff are heavily caffeinated, so we always um, want to be able to make sure that we can curate everyone's individual Jewish experience. Some of our students are Orthodox and some of our students are secular. We want to make sure that we can kind of provide Jewish life that's meaningful to everybody across the board. We also, very important for anyone who's a prospective student, we are going to be hosting our second annual Fresh Fest, which is our pre-orientation 
um, program for incoming students and transfer students. So if you're going to be joining the campus community, it's an opportunity to either move in early if you're going to be living on campus or if you're a commuter, just an opportunity to get to know other Jewish folks before the rest of the campus moves in and gets started. So it's a couple of days before everybody else. And we, this past year, we did go-karting. We did like goofy little icebreakers. We had a fire pit where we made s'mores. And it was just this really lovely opportunity for students to kind of get to know each other and have fun. Um, and then one of the biggest things is we really want students to bring 100% of their selves to the space. And for some of our students, that means like being Persian and Jewish. For some of our students, that means being Russian speaking and Jewish. And so we just want to make sure that students feel excited about being Jewish and. And so we have our culture committee and other micro community building opportunities to just have fun with people who have similar backgrounds or similar interests. And then leadership. We have internships through Hillel. Um, my favorite is our um, campus engagement interns, um, of which Michelle, who's on the call, is one. Um, and uh, we have other jobs and opportunities, just like different ways to get involved. And then we've got two student clubs uh, that are through Hillel. There's Sea Wolves for Israel, of which Katya is the vice president. And then we've got um, Jewish Student Association, of which Michelle is the secretary. So um, two really amazing orgs. They do so much fun stuff. Um, and they're way, way, way cooler than I am. And so I'm going to let them talk about all the cool stuff that they do um, in a minute. So before I hand it off to the students, I imagine that one of the hot button questions is going to be, what is Jewish life like now? Um, obviously, since October 7th, Jewish life has really shifted and changed on a lot of college campuses. We are very fortunate that here at Stony Brook, Things have definitely changed, but not so drastically as they have at other institutions. There's been no physical assaults on campus. Um, students are physically safe. Um, we've got an amazing partnership with the University Police Department, and they've been very, very proactive in making sure that all students on campus feel very safe. Um, in terms of what Hillel provides in this um, in this space, um, like I said, we liaise regularly with campus security. We provide mental health and wellness resources. So, in addition to our um, our own social worker Julie, we also have a partnership with other social workers um, and other licensed therapists who can meet with students on a regular clinical basis if they need more access to resources. One of the biggest things that we heard from students is that they really just wanted cultural competency. They wanted to talk to a therapist who is Jewish, um, especially now. And I totally get that. So that was one of the things that we made sure that we offered students at the start. Um, and then we do regular wellness programming. Sometimes you don't, I think everyone should go to therapy or if they want and need that, that resource. Um, but sometimes all you want to do is color. That's fine. So we've got like our wellness corner. We've got other opportunities to just kind of disconnect for a second, unplug and just chill out with friends for a minute. So we also have those resources. Um, we do tons of bias consultations. So if any student experiences anti-Semitism, we have a really thorough one-step guide of how to get from I've experienced something all the way to adjudication through the university. Um, and so that's very clear, very concise. And we work with our partners at the university to make sure that that's dealt with very quickly. Um, and we're making sure that things are dealt with efficiently and effectively. Um, and then other than that, just making sure that we as Hillel are providing really great educational resources to our university partners, administrators, professors, um, and to students across campus, both Jewish and not Jewish. So our students who are fun and great. So there's Katya and Michelle. I'm going to let them unmute themselves and introduce themselves. Oh, I was going to let you go first, Katya. I'm sorry. <laughs> Michelle, um, you go first. Okay. Uh, my name is Michelle. I'm a sophomore and I'm double majoring in human evolutionary bio and psych. This is my first year being heavily involved in leadership positions with Hillel and I have two, as Jess mentioned. I am one of three uh, engagement interns through Hillel and I'm also the secretary of the Jewish Student Association. And besides that, I'm also on our rugby team. So there's kind of a lot going on there because I think Stony Brook has a lot to offer in that department. Um. Is there any more information you want me to share? Would you rather me chill out? That's for good now? for now. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Katya? 
Hey everybody, um, my name is Katya. I am the vice president of our pro-Israeli club, um, Sea Wolves for Israel, because our mascot is the Sea Wolf. Um, I am a psychology major and then a minor in women and gender studies. Um, and I'm also the president of our Stony Brook um, ASL and Deaf Culture Club as well. Cool, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna give them more time. I have questions for them that people sent in in advance. Um, but before we do that, I'm also just gonna kick it back to um, Katya for five seconds and then Michelle for five seconds to give us like a one-two on things that SFI and JSA do. Yeah, so SFI is kind of, um, we're a pretty new club, honestly. We've been around for maybe about five years now on campus. Um, we do a lot of things from hosting um, Shabbat dinners catered towards like a more Israeli type of like learning. Um, and we also have, um, we've done Cafe Evrit for a multitude of semesters now. It's kind of just like an introductory um event where you come in, make an iced coffee, you know, like an aroma, if you know what that is, um, and kind of speak to our Israel fellow, um, because she's great. Um, her name is Noah. Um, but we do a bunch of educational and also kind of just like fun events. Um, we have Krav Maga that we've been doing for a little while, and that's always been like a, a fan favorite of everybody's. Um, but yeah. Awesome. And then Michelle. So JSA kind of focuses on hosting social events for Jewish students. We tend to hold them every other week, so about two a month, and they range from having a Shabbat dinner. We had about one for the semester, and it was like pretty big, um, versus having them a little bit more regularly. Because Halal itself does um, Shabbat. We hosted things like pickle party, Jewish-themed Jeopardy, and it just kind of provides a space for your Jewish students that might not have another place to go, just to kind of hang out meet new people, do fun events. Like we had a hall of like, like in college, like there aren't really as many other opportunities to do stuff like that. So it's kind of for people to hang out. And usually like one e-board member or like person in charge of something in JSA will run a specific event. And they're also kind of in charge of kind of explaining the background. So when we did the hall of bake, like we had one of the members kind of explain the significance of making it like both culturally and religiously. So it's kind of like social, but also has some like notes too. So it's kind of like something for everybody there. Awesome. Um, and I will also say that the pickle party is one of my favorites. Um, the students always make like the wackiest pickles, um, which I love. Awesome. Okay. So there are a couple of questions that came up in advance. Um, so I'm just going to punt some of those over to the students. Um, so I'll do Michelle first and then Katya. What has been your favorite part about being at Stony Brook as a student? I think all the different types of people I've gotten to meet. I think also being in like several different spaces has given me the opportunity to meet so many people. And I think that I've grown so much as a person and I've like learned so much from those who've been around me, whether I've like in my classes, in the groups that I'm in, just like, you know, living with them. Like, it's been really, really great. And I like, that's what I'm, I think I'm taking away the most so far. Yeah, I feel very similarly. Um, I'm a commuter student. So when I was going into Stony Brook, I was kind of like hesitant. And I was like, am I going to make friends? Am I going to find a community? Um, but my favorite part has honestly been finding friends and like taking a variety of classes. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty busy. So I feel like the people that I'm surrounded with like ground me. Um, and I think it's very important to me. Um, I also really enjoy taking a lot of different classes. So like linguistics, sociology, like calculus. Um, it's all very fun. You get to like... <laughs> Jess is laughing at me. Um, <laughs> you get to kind of expand your horizons and get to know people in different majors and with different like life paths. I would never have considered um, calculus to be like a very fun experience, but I love that for you, Katya. Um, amazing. So a couple of questions like logistics wise that people ask that I'm going to just like take very quickly. Um, how do we get a Shabbat key for our dorm if we've been given a room assignment? Um, so that is something that you would talk right to um, your RA and the folks who are kind of, so how university, the university like kind of structures residence halls is like there's like little quads. Um, and so the leader of the individual quad and the residence hall that you're in, there's pro staff and then there's student staff. So the pro staff would be the one alongside the RA who would help coordinate for you to get a Shabbat key. I will say that depending on the place that you're at, you'll also need to make sure that the front desk is aware of the fact that you will have a spot key so that they can come and let you in in the 
when you come back either from Shabbat dinner um, or if you're there, uh, if you're coming back after sundown. Um, for those uh, also who need to know the answer, there's an A-Roof on campus that encamp encompasses um, the entirety of campus as well as like our Orthodox uh, couple's house that's not so far from campus. It's like right across the train station. Um, so that is pretty all encompassing. It also goes past uh, and encompasses the Chabad right off campus. Um, so it's, it's pretty big. Um, and then, so yes. And then, uh, people have questions about the different Minion meme. Right now, the only thing that we have in terms of regular, um, Minion is really just our Saturday Minion. And then, um, the occasional will have egalitarian and non-egalitarian, um, minion meme on Fridays, but we don't have like a daily minion. Um, and those two, um, Friday options and the one Saturday option are the only things that we have right now. Um, and then in terms of the wacky pickle, a very good question. Last year, a group of students, um, pickled non cucumbers and, um, put a bunch of hot sauce in them. Perhaps that's how you traditionally make a pickle. They didn't taste like traditional pickles, but they were delicious. Um, and I appreciated how creative they got. Um, amazing. Okay. Uh, so one of the other questions that was asked is what is it like overall to be a Jewish student at Stony Brook? Uh, I can go first. Out of contact, actually, I went the first class. <laughs> okay. Um, so being a Jewish student is kind of a Stony Brook, at least as a unique experience, just because there's so many different types of Jewish students. Um, I've made like really great friends through Hello, and like they kind of expanded more than just like my friends at Hello. They've been like friends that are really dedicated, like my lifelong friends, basically. Um, yeah, I also feel that working with like all of my staff is incredible, um, especially our Israel fellow. I've had such like, we, I've met three of them now and all of them have been like incredible people to work with. Um, and I feel about that, like about our staff in general. Um, I feel super supported. I know that I have a community of people that I can go to anytime. I have multiple times went to Jess to like talk about like a dramatic life happening. Um, and we just like sit and go la la la. But it's been an incredible community. Um, very happy to be a Jewish student at Sunny Work. I think there's like so many different ways to like be Jewish and I think that something really cool about Stony Brook is it kind of gives you the way to kind of figure out what kind of Jew you are and so to speak if you like me personally before I got here I wasn't really sure because I didn't really come from a religious family I didn't really have that many Jewish friends I didn't and I never really like had a specific Jewish space to exist in so coming here was kind of my first opportunity to kind of explore that and I think because there's multiple student clubs both on campus and also like associated with Chabad like you can kind of other events that are more social for people that don't really that like identify more culturally as Jewish and people that are more religious there are people there so you kind of find people that match your level and that you can engage with so I think it's like a very exploratory process but I think that like what like as you get into it I think it's very rewarding to be a part of Jewish life here awesome um, and then one of the big questions that, that came up a few times in advance is what is anti-Semitism like on campus this semester? Do you feel safe? Do you feel supported, et cetera? Yeah, so <clears throat> I feel very lucky that our campus has been as calm as it has been. Um, especially in recent events, we've seen a bunch of students not feel particularly safe on their campuses. And I can like say the complete opposite. Um, so like from having a vigil like for October 7th where we saw like a bunch of students and faculty come out um, to just like the regular events that happen at Hillel like prior to October 7th and especially now after October 7th. Um, I feel extremely supported. Um, there are times like personally that I kind of feel a little hesitant in my existence in other spaces um, but like I have a bunch of non-Jewish colleagues and friends that like make me feel really supported and like people that I can talk to and that like we share um like healthy conversation, healthy boundaries and things like that. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you on that. And I feel like our campus is, I wouldn't say unique, but I think at least fortunate that we haven't really had anything come up. I mean, people might have like their own personal thoughts and feelings about it, but I think in general, it's tended to be a relatively calm environment. I mean, obviously there are people voicing opinions on how they feel like on either side, but nobody has ever expressed like at least to my knowledge, which I think is pretty extensive. Like nobody has expressed any malintent or desire to hurt anybody. 
So like, I think it's been fun. I think we're very fortunate to have that. And like, there are safe spaces for people to go if they've like had, you know, questions or like some things that I've like, we have meetings as an engagement intern with our supervisor and kind of took over the things that we talked to the people about. And after October 7th, the narrative kind of like changed in our meetings. And we were just like, when we talk to people and that gets brought up, how do we navigate that? And like, how do we provide people with safe spaces to express maybe that maybe they have family there or maybe like they don't know how to feel about it. So I think like people have different ways to express their feelings about it. But no matter what feelings, no one's been, you know, harmful. <laughs> yeah. And um, an, a different question came up about outside of the context of October 7th, I think, um like, have there been common instances of anti-Jewish bias or cultural insensitivity? We had, like, one minor incident last year and then a couple of, like, moments around Israel last year. But for the most part, our campus is pretty calm in that space. I think since October 7th, most of the conversation has been um, largely in the context of, like, protests on campus that feel, I will say, like, the rhetoric is obviously, like, pretty... Um, like it can be really complicated and it can store up stir up a lot of feelings for a lot of students, but it is also really different than how it's transpiring at other schools where students are physically um, getting into altercations with each other, which is really complicated and and um, problematic. Um, and so for our campus, it doesn't feel like it's blowing up to that level. Um, but I will also say that like we are the reasons why we were able to be really nimble after October 7th is because we as a Hillel have a great relationship with the university. We had an anti-Semitism task force that started meeting last year. So in October of 2022, we had started meeting for almost an entire year. And so we were able to act really quickly and nimbly after October 7th to meet the needs of our students. No campus is perfect. Stony Brook is definitely not perfect in its response to October 7th. But I will say that like the good intentions from the university and from people who really just want students of all backgrounds to feel really safe and supported is deeply appreciated. And we appreciate how much they work with us and our students and make sure that they're heard. Um, great. Okay. So there was a question about um, space for Jewish students to be during Shabbat. Um, Yes. So, I mean, it depends on like the nuance of the question of like, if you're asking if there are Shabbat opportunities, there is always a place for you to be on sh for Shabbat, whether that's like at Hillel, JSA, SFI, Chabad, um, with our Orthodox couple. Um, yes, we gather them together, if that's your question. Yes, Aton, we gather them together. Um, so like we bring people together together. Uh, twice a month for Shabbat usually. Um, so like, for example, our big um, Shabbat of like the semester, like our first Shabbat of the semester, we had like 110 people. Um, I think JSA had like 90 people at their Shabbat. I think SFI had something similar um, usually. So it they're like, there are some like really big Shabbat opportunities on Saturdays, Saturday morning davening, and then it's followed by a quick oneg um, and like kiddish opportunity. So yes there are Saturday morning davening opportunities. If you're looking for like a non, if you're looking for an egalitarian davening opportunity, there is none on Saturday, but there is an Orthodox non-egal with a mechitza on Saturdays. Um, how friendly is Hillel and the Stony Brook Jewish community towards LGBTQ plus Jews? Very friendly. We have um, multiple queer um, and trans Jewish uh, like pop-ups that we do. So um we have, so one of the things that we have is called culture committee, and it's basically like little micro community building opportunities. So we have like Russian speaking Jewish students who do like cute little Russian events, like they played like Durak and like watch cartoons and do other um, like RSJ things that I don't understand because they all speak Russian um, and do cute things. Katya is one of them and like hangs out and uh, do cute Russian things. Um, and then we also, one of the things that we have as a part of that is um, uh, like one of our queer students hosts like queer pop-ups and like things with the LGBTQ center. So recently they did like a cutie pop-up at Starbucks. Um, they've also done, um, they did like a queer tote bag painting at the LGBTQ center, um, but really just like a space to feel affirmed and cool in your identity um, as both a Jew and like an LGBTQ person, so just like bring your whole self to Hillel is our motto. 
So whatever that means for you. Um, do you host admitted students for exploratory spots? Absolutely. If you want to come by, please do. Um, we recommend reaching out to us. Um, we'll share our contact information. Um, I'm going to put that in the chat right now. I'm going to put my contact information. Um, so this is how you can reach us. Um, so that's my email. And if you want, there's not a ton going on right now because it's the uh, it's winter break. But if you ever want to check out the things that are happening on our campus, this is the best place to check out what's happening. Um, and so there's nothing happening right now, like I said, because it's spring break or it's a uh, winter break. But that's usually where you can find all of our upcoming Shabbat experiences, um, bagel bash, learnings, etc. So check back in like a month and it will be pop in on that website. Awesome. Any other questions or things that are coming up for folks on the call? I think we've got like a minute left to answer any questions. Um, if not, I'm going to quickly share my screen again um, so that folks can grab my contact information and that of our staff team. No other questions? Amaze. I'm going to quickly share this. Okay, if anyone wants to take a screenshot, this is where you can find all the answers to your questions. There's our website, our Instagram, which is the best place to find information about what's happening at Hillel on a regular basis, um, or just to like see pictures of events so you can kind of get a vibe um, on everything that's happened so far this semester. Um, also, we just started a TikTok. Trust me, I'm not starting it because I'm too old to do that, but we have a really cool undergrad who's doing it. Um, and then uh, parents can follow us on Facebook. Uh, and then those are our emails. So feel free to either email our general email or honestly, just email me directly. It's the same place. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Jessica, Michelle, and Katya. That was great. Um, so much great information. And to our guests. Again, follow up either directly with um, Jessica or definitely with admissions. You know how to reach us. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thanks, everybody.